Brian, what's up, brother? How you been? Good, man. Good. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about you. I really want to get more into depth about who is Ryan. And we know you do the City Gala, which is a phenomenal event. You do not only City Gala, you do the summit, which empowers so much people, but there's always something behind it, right? Mm -hmm. But I know Google can do that job for me. We can mm -hmm. Google it and do that. We'll tap into a little bit of that. But I want to get to know who Ryan is. I want my following to say a man that's changing so many people's lives. How did that become? And how is it to be a father and living life and being meeting so many people and changing so many people's lives um well thank you uh well first of all i love being a father nice. you know uh, my son is uh the apple of my eye as they say and uh i'm very proud of him he does look a lot like you thank you yeah he's 17 now and and i just can't believe he's he's got my grandfather's mind as an engineer and oh. it's very interesting to see that because uh i I, I skipped that uh, form of genius. <laughs> um, and uh, my, my grandma and, and grandfather both came from rural places. My grandfather was a farmer. Uh, my grandma grew up in a rural place in Minnesota. And they both, of course, moved out in, into California and, and met. And uh, they had four daughters. And uh, granddad was a electronic engineer. So that that's ultimately, where that's where your son right, gets a little bit of that. That, that ulti ultimately became a rocket scientist. Wow! And uh, you know, he, he was my hero. He was the biggest. Um, he was the biggest hero that I had. You know, in, like the father figure father type. Figure. Uh, definitely the patriarch of the family, and um, uh, so I learned a lot of wisdom from him. I'm actually really glad to, that I had that relationship with my grandfather because. I felt I feel like he, he he came from a perspective of wisdom, you know. Right. I think I think a lot of parents, even me, you know, my son my son was born when I was uh, twenty two years old. Wow. You know, he's so that's just twenty three now. Right. So that's <laughs> that's a baby raising a baby. Exactly. You know what I mean? And yeah. and uh, so I got a lot of wisdom from him, and and my mom did the best that she could. My mom raised me, my brother, and my sister by herself. Wow, single mother. So yeah, so we were on, you know, housing assistance, we were on uh, um, food stamp programs, you know, all that kind of stuff, actually. Which was really, really hard, yeah, right? Yeah, we really but, survived but, on but, that. But I think it's beautiful to show that, because look at where you're at now. I mean, you were from very low to now, you, you, you have major people that come to your event. I mean, one of your events, you had Ashton Kutcher, Matthew McConaughey, Holly Berry, give her my number. And <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like you to, I'd like you to hold your breath. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, you, one can dream, right? <laughs> and John Travolta, the list goes on, right? So your life has changed so much. How does your son see you in the sense like, that's my dad, mm -hmm. like, you know, from kind of what he's seen, and, and like people come up to you, and people want to build a friendship with you. I and he's just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that he cares. Like, I, that's, that, just, that's, that's my dad. Just like, yeah, that's right? my dad. That's what my dad does. But you know, John Travolta. It's like when we were kids. You know, those, right. that's way out of his element. Uh, I think that you know, if I maybe if I brought in uh, some superhero guy from the Avengers, then, then, he, probably, be a bit more then he might be impressed with dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we've not had that yet. <laughs> now he doesn't care, right? <laughs> so how did um, I, City Gala has such an, an emotion attached to it? Because it's not just about bringing speakers. It's not just about an event, but also you give so much to nonprofits. Also you do so much for so many people. And also the people that you have on stage is people that have so much worth are helping other people. It's just not because somebody's a great speaker. There's so much things behind that. How do you select that? How does that passion come in for you? Uh, well, as, as, as far as the, uh, the gala is concerned, you know, it's very easy to see what people are working on. You know, so uh, for example, uh, Halle Berry was uh, uh, one of our speakers, and and she went through a, a lot of just utter turmoil personally, mm -hmm. and it's got to be difficult being a celebrity like that and have have just your life out there for everybody to know. And so she came to our event and inspired the entire room by right. by talking about how, you know, she was. A victim of domestic violence, she, you know, she has three failed marriages. She doesn't, she, she does not like that. 
um, that it affects her 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 kids, you know, because right. her, her kids are watching her go through all these struggles and stuff like that. And so she was very open and vulnerable, and and it really resonated with the audience. And mm -hmm. and it also helps as a strong call to action. Hey, look, domestic violence needs to end. So when you have people like that that are coming in to our event to to inspire people, I think that. Um, having such highly influential people just get down to earth about humanitarian work, their values, and, and, and what we can do to better the world, it's, it creates a big impact. And not only that, I think you said something really clear and, the, and very powerful in the sense, a lot of people think, oh, celebrities don't go through anything. Right. They have it all. You know, right. They don't suffer, they don't go to pain. Mm -hmm. And look, at, you're talking about a, a huge movie star mm -hmm. had domestic violence. Right. Yeah. So, Everybody goes through stuff. It is. It's, it's true. They're, they're human. And, um, and that makes it even more impactful that they do work. The work of uh, philanthropic good. The work of you know, giving forward and, and, uh, and using their giant platform that they have right. in yeah, order to influence uh, the masses. I, I think that's just incredibly important. With Ashton Kusher, you also brought him because of his tra uh, trafficking thing that he does, right? Yeah. So you really impact some people on that. Yeah, there were there, there was a couple of reasons that we wanted that we wanted to work with Ashton Kutcher on on uh, the city summit. So the city summit, being a, a socially conscious business acceleration experience, mm -hmm. um, that leads to the gala. Uh, Ashton was great for two purposes. Number one. He's really, really uh, hitting home run after home run in his in his investment uh, fund. He's really built that up to be a, a phenomenal brand. And then the second thing is 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 that the thing that he cares about most, as as far as his humanitarian and philanthropic work, is shining a light on uh, uh, human sex trafficking. And you know, literally, there are slaves in this world. There are there are people that are uh, there are young girls that are chained to beds and, and and drugged out of their mind, and and these slavers need to be put out of business, entirely out of business. And so he speaks out about it. But not only that, he appears about it. He went to um, to, to Washington D.C. Uh, and, and was it. I, b I believe it was Congress. I, yeah, I, I can't remember the platform, but I believe it, it, it was at Congress where, you know, he um, he talked about his organization right. called Thorn, and what what he does is he works with the CIA and FBI to, and 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 works on developing software to find these crooked people and, right. and put them away. So right, right, right. Yeah, and I think he made a comment that he said he's he's made more money being an entrepreneur than movies. Yeah, he hits like you said, he hits one home run after yeah. another one. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And what I really like about you because we have personal uh, friendship besides of the things that you do. It, you're you're a really nice guy. I, I see how you treat everybody the same. You can be with us, Jen, and you can be with the the guy that's cleaning the table, and you have the same same values for each other. And that's something that I think people lose. Mm. What, what have you done not to lose that? Because sometimes you're around so many people that have such ego, mm -hmm. and I see you like that's not my ego. Well, like, I know, you know what I do. Look at we we all. I, I think we all go through our ups and downs. Mm -hmm. You know, I get hit with massive adversities all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad that you think I'm a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the truth is, is that humanitarian work is, is unpleasant. And um, there's parts of, of, of what it is that, that, I, that I do on a daily basis that are very tough. Right. And it, um, I, I think it's easy to, to go out in public and shake hands and, and be the nice guy, but look at the other side of the table. Why, why is there a need for us to have to feed hungry people or shelter homeless people. Why is there a need for that? And you know, in in the combat of all of that, I'm I'm not nice. I'm, I'm vicious because I want to I want to help solve these grand challenges because I don't think that humanity can can uh, move forward into our next generation without actually curing curing those those elements yeah. there and doing those things. Yeah. Man, that's that's that, that is beautiful. Now, one question that we so have that's me is, saying that I'm not a nice guy. Right, he's got his moments. <laughs> he's not a nice guy when he does. He doesn't need to be a nice guy. When he's a nice guy, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> so let me ask you something. We ask everybody on the show: Have you faced a depression, or know anybody that's gone through depression? Yeah, yeah. I mean, myself personally, I um, uh, I I had a massive 
uh, break up with the next girlfriend and um, uh, during that time I, I just kind of laid on the couch for an entire year. I got fat, I got out of shape, I, uh, I basically couldn't even function. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't want to look at my computer, I didn't want to work, I couldn't even answer phone calls, I was calling people back, you know, three, four days later. Um, I was just completely paralyzed and, and um, it took a lot to dig myself out of that, that sort of, um, that sort of element of, of just like the day to day, you know, waking up and just really just wanting to just lay on the couch right. and watch TV right. and just not do anything. do anything or deal with anybody right. or anything. Yeah, that's that's one of the things of depression um, because depression we I, I, we all hit a, a, a point in our life that we face a depression. There's a big difference of having an illness and being depressed in certain parts of an area in yeah. our lives, like in your case when you lost someone that you really care for, that relationship ended, mm -hmm. and, and you went through that. And some people can go two or three years with that, but luckily you went through one year and you, and you mentioned things, you get fat, you don't want to talk to anybody, you don't want to do anything, right. you don't care about anything else. But what was it that made you say, I'm done with this, this is, I'm done. It was a process. I, I don't think that, that, that it was like a, a there wasn't like a moment of, of like clarity. Okay. Um, it was a process. I, I, I slowly started to read personal development, self-help books. I had no idea that there was an entire industry, you know, built around people that can help you. you right, know? right. And, and I, quite honestly, I wasn't even looking for it. I, I just kind of, what was to myself, um, I got so broke that I had to move into my grandma's house and um, and live with grandma and uh, I just started reading and and they made me the books made me feel really good um, story after story you know and and all these authors are now my hero you know uh, my heroes and most of them and, are your friends now too well <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't say friends but you know uh, for example Jack Canfield his mm -hmm. book the success principles is one of my favorite of all time he's the author of chicken soup for the soul but um, that Success Principles book I read at least two or three times because I loved it. It's so easily digest digestible right, and right. the fundamentals of it are things that I still practice you know, today. In the book it says, you know, big dreams attract big, big people. Right. You know? And I, so I just said, oh, okay, I'm gonna dream big. And then, and then it, 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 there's another book, uh, You Were Born Rich with uh, Bob Proctor. Oh, Bob. Uh, and and he talks Bob. about uh, he talks about how it costs the same amount of time to dream a big dream as it does a small dream. Exactly. So you might as well dream, dream big. big. Exactly. Right. And those kind of, the, just those epic heroes that were willing to write down their knowledge and, and help, it really helped me. And so it was a process of, of getting out of the depression. And then I started exercising again. And then I started get, you know, getting back into myself and, and soul searching and meditating. and. So there was a whole long process that led me to have an idea and really what it was is, is the inflection or the turning moment was when I found out exactly who I am and I had clarity over myself and what, what I want to do for the rest of my life and how I was going to be, do, live and act. So uh, once I got that clarity, there's just, there's no chance. There is there there are zero chances that I'll ever be depressed again. Awesome. And one thing about the books, the great thing about books, books have no judgment. Right. Like they don't judge you whatsoever. Because right. other people will judge you all the time. And why are you not doing this? And why not doing it? You're being lazy. You don't want to do anything in your life. But a book can bring you so much knowledge. And it does has no judgment. And it's awesome. It's beautiful that. Well, I mean, it, it's beautiful in the sense that you went through a certain process that you were able to do it, and it wasn't like an overnight, because an overnight you can fall back, right? Because it just shoots up and you shoot back. But you build that stair, mm -hmm. the stairway, to have a solid foundation. Yeah, like said, and I'll be honest point. with you, I did not know what I was doing. I, I just, it just started transforming me from the inside. It, it wasn't like I had a, you know, 10-step plan where I'm going to get out of that. You right. know, I just was, was reading because it, it made me feel good and one book led to the other and then I start watching the guys in videos on, on the internet and it just it just kept going, you know. And is our City Gala also it in is. there? It is. Um, it didn't start off as City Gala, the, the brand name. It just it started off with me wanting to help start up non for profits. 
and so I would help project by project and until I, I um, came up with the idea to, to put it all under one name and, and just continue on as, as the City Gala and we still help start up non-for-profits every year. That's so amazing, man. That's so awesome the things they do and how you impact people and do so many things. How do you see Ryan five years from now? Well, um, in, by 2020, we're going to uh, sell the City Summit. The City Summit is now a for-profit business enterprise. Okay. And uh, by 2020, we'll sell the Summit, and I'll exclusively be working on sort of a grand overall uh, vision uh, for my foundation. foundation. What's your foundation? foundation is called Global Unity. Global Unity. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys look it up. Make sure you it's not look upable right now. It's not look upable. No, but, but when it, it is, it we'll let you know. Yeah. When it, when it yeah. is, we'll let you know so you can share with other people and make a little donation mm -hmm. and do some really good stuff. Now, one other thing that we always ask our, our, our guests is give us four tips. Four tips. Four tips. Just four tips that can empower anybody or just four tips that empower you. Okay. Well, uh, my favorite thing to say is that we rise by lifting others. Uh, I think that we grow so that we can give, and that's uh, from Tony Robbins. Right. Um, I love uh, I love um, advising people on on how to promote their business, and so what I say to other entrepreneurs, because I'm a, of course a promoter, uh, what I say to other entrepreneurs about promoting is, is that your your voice is your only currency in this world. You are uniquely defined by as an individual. So be authentic with your voice and use it in order to uh, promote your business uh, because people are looking at you. And um, so that's, that's three nuggets there. And I, uh, you know, I don't have a fourth at, at the moment on the, on the top of my brain. <laughs> but your voice, the way you said it, I've never heard it and it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that one more time? Your voice is your only unique currency in this world. Right. Yeah. And, and that also means that your voice has power. Mm -hmm. Your voice has worth. So always speak up on what you believe because you can empower others just the way Ryan is empowering so many. And it's taught so many, hey, the power of your voice. Ryan, it's always a pleasure to have you here, man. It's an honor to hang out with you. It's, I really appreciate everything that you've done for me, allowing me to cover your events, allowing me to come to your events, do so many things. And I thank you for giving back in my case, and also thank you for doing so many other things for other people, and I continue seeing in five years from now to still have a phenomenal uh, friendship with you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That's love, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.